This week, I printed. This week, I printed. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. And today we're starting a new series and we're calling it Twip. It sounds pretty ridiculous, but actually it might work quite well. I don't really know. TWIP stands for This Week I Printed, and the title of the video probably told you that. TWIP is going to be a series where I take a look at something that I've printed this week. And it has to be a functional print. It can't just be benches and calibration cubes and stuff like that. It has to be something that's usable. So it could be, I mean, the most obvious solution is a 3D printed part for a printer, which is obviously functional because it goes on a printer, and it's 3D printed because it came off of a printer but something like this, a spool holder for a printer, or it could be something for your house, something for your car. But it's an idea for me to be able to test new filaments, to be able to test other printers, for you to send me things that you've designed and maybe I could test print for you or other people can look at, and just a nice way to share different ideas about filaments, settings, designs, and all that sort of stuff. We'll comment on the filament that we used, the printer that was used, how well the settings were, how well the thing printed, how well it was designed maybe. It's just a fairly open discussion, a fairly casual video about something that I've printed this week. For obvious reasons, not every episode will have a full introduction like that. It will start something along the lines of, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This week I printed a spool holder for the Mark III out of PETG. Let's take a closer look. <laughs> Da -de -da -de -da -de -da. Let's get on with it. So this week I've printed this, the spool holder for the Mark III, which is obviously designed by Prusa Research and links to their files can be found in the description below, which I will obviously do for any creator that sends files to suggest printing. So in terms of functionality on the part, you've obviously got the clip at the bottom that clips to the printer, the top part that holds the spool, and for some reason this hole that goes all the way through, I'm not entirely sure what that's for. There's some holes in the side here, presumably to reduce printing time and to give some extra interior walls because it's funny how on 3D printer parts by having a hole it can make it stronger because you have those perimeters that recur in the center of the part and that gives you extra stiffness in that direction. It does have some less stiffness in this direction but I didn't print it very dense, we'll get onto settings in a minute. And of course we've got some nice ribbing at the back here which helps the strength between the mounting face and the main body of the part. Let's see how well it fits to the printer. Now I printed this because the first one that I got with the printer actually cracked as soon as I did this. I basically put it on and I was a little bit silly and I pushed it from the top here. So I pushed backwards on that and this part at the bottom didn't clip under. It just sort of pushed against the printer and it just snapped. Uh, so this time I'm going to try and be careful and push down more than I'm pushing out. So there we go. It does seem to have actually cracked a little bit. Yeah, I think that's cracked as well. Let's see how well it holds the spool. Don't need this at the moment. I mean, that spool is not full, but it holds it pretty well. It's not too wobbly. I mean, if it's that's pulling around here, it sort of rotates fairly freely. So yeah, not a bad print. So now let's talk about how I printed it. In this instance, it was on the Mark III using the standard 0.2 millimeter fast profile. I added a two millimeter brim just because I knew it was a long print and going overnight. The material I used to print it is PETG by Rigid Ink, which generally temp uh, works at a slightly lower temperature than most other PETGs, but not by much, maybe five degrees, maybe 10 at most. It is it's actually this one right here. It's a translucent blue. It looks quite nice. It gives a nice sort of effect afterwards. You can see the infill depending on how many top bottom layers, etc. you have. That delivers quite a nice effect, which aesthetically can work depending on what you want to do. In this instance, blue was probably a pretty bad choice really because, well, the rest of the printer is like orange and black. So, you know, blue, orange, black, not the best choice, but it sits, it sits, it fits and it rolls. So, what more could one ask for? Maybe it not breaking. Just to be clear, I'm not criticizing the fault of the design for breaking. It was, again, probably my rough handling of putting it on or just some slight print setting tweaks that I need to do. 
to get that right. I might have been a bit rough the first time I tried it. So in summary, was it successful? I'd say yes. I've got a nice spool holder that's maybe slightly easier to deal with than the two-part one that I already had. And it looks quite nice and it printed fairly well. It did take me a couple of attempts. I did try an ASA first and it was having none of it because uh, without an enclosure, ASA has a tendency to curl. But otherwise, a print that I'm very happy with. So thank you very much for watching. That's been the first episode of TWIP, This Week I Printed, where I printed a spool holder on the Mark III out of Rigid Inks PETG. If you'd like to make a suggestion about what to print next week, please leave a comment to a Thingiverse link down in the comment section below. Obviously leave any comments about this episode, like and subscribe if you want to see more from me. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to see some of the behind the scenes stuff. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>